Hi guys. So um, I want to cover how you can save and load your game um, on a separate project. So what you're going to need to do is um, you're going to have to migrate your characters to a new project. Uh, you could also do it with a new level within this same characters project but uh, I guess a lot of people will be wanting to add these characters to to their own projects so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to migrate the custom characters folder to a new project um, I'll just mag migrate it to one of my random projects so just return, click on custom characters and click on the migrate button like this. You right click and you hit the migrate button. Hit OK. And I'll, I'll just pick, a, I just picked a random project, um, AI project content and select folder. Okay, so now we're done migrating all 219 files from the from the custom characters um, project, and we're going to switch over to the AI project. So I'm just going to click on File, Open Project, um, AI Project. I double click on that. Yeah, so here we've got our AI project. So I'm going to create a new level on this project. Um, I'll just make the floor mesh a bit bigger and I'm going to add my custom character. I'll use the female version. Um, blueprints, custom female blueprint. Yes. And then I'm going to possess this character. Okay. So under the details panel, just type possess. There's many ways you can possess a character. You can possess it by making it the default character in the my game mode or yeah, in the game mode. Or you could do it through uh, blueprints or you can do it using the details panel down here and you can just uh, possess with player at zero that's the fastest easiest way to do it so anyway um, if i click play if i click play our character will be possessed um so character is possessed but you notice that I'm not able to load or save anything. Okay, so that's what this tutorial is all about. We're gonna uh, see how we can do that. So the first thing I'm going to have to do here is to add a save station and a save game blueprint. So this save game blueprint, what it does is it creates our save game, or it checks if our save game is already been created so it checks if first of all event begin play and it checks if our save game exists okay and the name of our save game file is save game okay so if it's true that the save game exists um, it will load that save game if it's false if that save file does not exist it will create a save game object okay so on every level where you want to load and save data you have to have this save game blueprint okay and that's mandatory for any a save system okay. and the next thing we need to have is a save station blueprint on our label so this blueprint um, I created this blueprint specifically for saving information for the female character okay. um, 
doesn't necessarily have to be like its own standalone blueprint. Uh, you can have this information within the female character blueprint as well, but I just kept it separately just to reduce the clutter. So anyway, once you have this, if you click on play, you notice that if I overlap this save game blueprint, I can press F to bring up the save menu. Okay. So if I click on save, then all the data is saved to our save game. Okay. Um, I haven't made any changes. So one of the changes I want to make is I want to add So um yeah I, I want I want to customize the character and then save the character but if I press I here um nothing's gonna happen because I don't have any inputs that have been set up. Okay. So if you watched the first tutorial for this pack, um you remember that I said that if you want to migrate this project to a new project, okay, you have to add your inputs, movement inputs, and character customization inputs, and all the rest of that. So, a lot of those inputs are not available in this project, so I just have to add them on my own. Um, and a project uh, engine input, we can add action mappings. Just click the plus button and uh, if you open up your female character blueprint you can actually find out which inputs are missing now right now only missing two inputs that's the character customization input and the inventory input. so we'll start with the character customization input um, we're going to name it custom uh, character customization. We'll add another input and we'll name it in inventory. Okay. So now if I hit play, if I press C, now I have my character customization menu. If I press I, now I have my inventory menu. So I can save my game now. And all the information has been saved. But you see the thing is that if I press play again, it won't be automatically loaded. And right now I don't have a menu to load the game. So the next thing I have to do is create a menu. So we're going to go on the level blueprint. And I'll go on blueprints, open level blueprints, and start to add the information we need to load the level. So the first thing we're going to do is we have to create a widget. Okay, the menu widget. So that's where the the continue button is, the load button and the new game button are. So under my custom characters, I'm gonna click on widget and I'm going to find the female menu. So we've got the female start menu here and I've event begin play. I'm going to 
type create widget. Okay. And I'm going to uh, use the asset in the browser. And click use asset browser. Um, you could also simply just type it here and you get the same thing here. So anyway, after that, we're going to add the view, the widgets to the viewport by typing add to viewport. We select that, add to viewport. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, show the cursor, the mouse cursor, because if we don't have a mouse cursor on the screen, we can't click on anything. So show mouse cursor, it's context uh, sensitivity should be disabled. And you click on set mouse cursor. And you add your controller. So get the player controller. You can turn the context sensitivity back on. So now, if we click on play, mm, I can't see my cursor. Let's just go through this again. Yeah, set show mouse cursor to true. Hit play. You should probably click the compile button, but anyway, it does that automatically. Now, if we press continue, our save character will be loaded in the same position where we save the game. So basically that's it. Um, you probably want to clean up one or two things because for example, we can still control the character even on the menus there. It doesn't really look that nice. So we could go to our blueprints and disable the input for the character. Uh, all you have to do is select your character in the level create a reference to that character within the level blueprint and disable input so that this character doesn't receive any input um, while the menu is on. So event begin play, disable input, uh, we use the player controller as the controller, connect it to the create widget menu and then um, for the input to be enabled again, when we start playing the game, we're going to use under the create female start menu widget. We're going to get the continue button and the new game button. We type get continue button. Also type get new game button. And let's bind an event that enables the input of the character because like right now if we just click play we can't do anything with this character it won't move around if I press continue it will load the game but the character still won't move around and the camera is not moving either so we only want that to happen when the main menu is on but when you start playing the game we don't want that to happen we want to be able to control the character so under the continue button we are going to bind an event when it's clicked so type bind on clicked bind event on clicked connect this the new game button to the same event as well another event let's make a custom event um, let's call it enable And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to type enable input and we're going to get our character reference. This is a reference of the character that's already on the level. We're going to make it our target. We're also going to make the player cont controller, uh, get the player controller and connect it to the controller here and we're going to connect this to the rest of our 
event sequence. Okay, so once you've done everything, it should look like this. Okay, event begin play, disable input so that our character and our camera don't move around. Well, and then we create the main menu, we add it to the viewport, and we set the mouse cursor to show. Okay, and then we bind an event so that when the continue button and the new game button are clicked, the input is enabled again and our character is able to move around again. And the last thing we want to do is show mouse cursor. We want to copy this and paste it over here. We want to make the mouse cursor disappear once we start playing the game. And we're going to connect this to our player controller. And this looks a bit dirty right now, but uh, you can clean it up on your own. So that should be it. Hit the compile button, hit the save button. Um, no, we, we don't need to save actually. Hit the compile button and press play. So now you can see that as long as our menu is on, the character is not moving around because the input is disabled, but this character is still possessed, mind you. So if we press on new game, we won't load anything, just able to move around. Press play again and press continue. We're now able to move around with the character we had saved. Um, and set up our character however we want. F on save and save and continue. Hit escape, press play, hit the continue button. I'm able to continue with this character. So basically, that's how you can create save games and use save games okay thanks for your time guys